All right, we are live with session 10 of Out of the Abyss. Hooray. It feels like, you know, kind of a big deal. Who would like to remind us what happened last time? Uh, last time, uh, a recent rock slide has left us in the vicinity of uh, some kind of ancient structure and uh, built underground, which we decided to go ahead and take a look at. It turned out to be the tomb of a Netherese, ancient Netherese noble, Rissus Kame, uh, who uh, didn't seem to be a particularly nice person. Uh, we ran into some traps, some curses, uh, some undead minions, and eventually into the the, the woman herself, who uh, was nasty, hurt a bunch, but eventually managed to take her down. And we also found a lovely new friend, uh, our good buddy Dawnbringer, who really does not like the dark and is a lightsaber. Miss anything there? No, that sounds about right. You guys All right. got tore up by specters and uh, what was the other thing? A wraith. Yeah, yeah. Still missing some max HP, but otherwise I think uh, I think everyone's mostly fine. So I think we were going to try to hurry on our way down to the Dark Lake to try and... You know, yeah. we've taken a couple detours, but uh, we're still disturbingly close to a Demon Lord. Yes, you are. And you guys needed a rest, and it's impossible since you guys just woke up like an hour ago anyway. So I presume you're taking it easy until you can find a camp, or find a camp and just hang out and take care well, of stuff, stuff until you can ra until you can rest. I presume we're going to get in the boat. And those of us that aren't steering the boat can rest. Um, the, uh, the shore that we're on, is that... Uh, a river or a tributary that leads into the Dark Lake, or is it like a section of the Dark Lake itself, or something like it, that? It was a section of the Dark Lake. Okay, so when we climb up out of the tomb, we're at that little shore that we washed up on, and then we can put the boat up and get in the boat and travel. But we don't know where we're going from here, right? Correct. Oh, did Gabagool get up at okay? Yes. Oh, yeah, he was just floating along in the water, wasn't he? Uh, pretty much. But I mean, that was up above, right? I meant out of the tomb. He never went down into the Wraith's chamber. Yep. Okay, so... We just, just gotta decide where we want to go. Do we need the map for that, guy? Or are we, are we sort of like... Uh, we have a general idea. We were heading towards uh, the... Deep Gnome City, weren't we? And that was... Uh, da, da, da. Yeah, it's another section on the lake itself. Um, the lake is more than just a lake. It's also a section of rivers and tributaries, and there are locks. It is multi-level, too. At some point, the the deep gnomes built channels and canals and stuff, so they have sections to where you pull in, and it'll adjust the water level, and you can get to a different level of the lake. Okay. Or you can get anybody out know where it is? by foot. Does anybody know where it is or which direction it's in? We did have some people who knew. Yeah. Uh, uh, if you get out into the water a ways, you can see lights of a city type of thing in the distance that may or may not be it. I mean, as long as those lights aren't back in the direction of certain death. Okay. Just, just have to keep yourself very well orientated towards where the demon lord is and just go the opposite direction and hope for the best. Yeah, it's like a reverse magnet. So the thing I want to ask is, does Gabagool dissolve silk rope? Does he dissolve what? Silk rope. Do you try putting silk rope in him? Yeah, a little bit of the end of one of my my fifty foot thing of silk rope. It will slowly start to eat away at it. 
Uh, okay. I was hoping for a way we could like hook him up to the boat so that he could follow or because we you've got like a sixty foot limit for us, right? Yes. So we'd have to go along the shore or whatever, presumably to stay within sight of him. Just put my arm on a soldier shoulder. Sometimes the the most important thing that someone can learn is when to let go. Let go of what? A pet. Okay. What what pet are you letting go? Look to the giant cube that jiggles as though it were panting. <laughs> okay. Think of them that way if you like, but I don't. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, I mean, uh, I think... Does Gabba go, go, go along the bottom or float along the top? He seems to be able to do either. That's handy. Okay. Um, then I guess I could just use the immovable rod to, to slow the boat down and stop it when I need to, to keep within 60 feet of it. Okay. Um, let's uh, see if we can get this thing going in the direction of those lights, then. Alright, I need a navigation roll from somebody. Well, it's navigation. Survival? Yes, survival. That's right. Okay. There's no navigation. I have survival. Yeah. So I will uh, also guidance myself. Man, I sure hope these lights in the middle of this giant le underground lake and the Underdark aren't, you know, angler lures. Why are you going to put that out there like that? <laughs> it's just supposed to be surprised and then, oh no. How are we... Fifteen. Okay. Uh, one thing you find out is that there is no resting when you're in ship mode. Hold on. I forgot how Even many. If you're not hold. one of the ones that's propelling. Okay. I mean, it's not. It's not a huge deal. Yeah, when it's in, like, can canoe mode, you can't hold enough people, so you have to go into ship mode, and you need uh, at least six people okay. rowing, so. Okay, that's oh, perfectly fine. So we'll be in canoe mode and, and head over there. Yeah. I just was, I have a I have something I can get back with, with my, one of my divine powers I can get back with Shrota, but I'll just wait for it. Um, so you guys can travel for a few hours, and it seems like you're getting closer to that particular city. But it looks like the water itself, you're going to have to get out and go over land to get to a different section. Okay. Does it look like we need to fold the boat up, or we can carry it? Um, you it's have to fold to it up. Pull. I mean, we got two pretty strong dwarves here, so I mean, like, yeah, yeah. carrying a, yeah. the canoe can just fine. Yeah, but right now it's 24 feet long, 8 feet wide, 6 feet deep. It's easier just to fold it up. Yeah, literally, okay. no reason to not fold it up. We get out, we fold it up, we gobble ghouls up with us, and we walk over land to the other side. Yep. All right. And at this point, uh, you guys are probably starting to feel tired. Been sailing half a day, been uh, fighting okay. early in the morning. Cool. Or whatever passes from morning that, down here. I, uh, I think some of you still have low strength. I've got drained oh, hit points. Nothing oh, drained hit points, strength. that's right. I have Just low me strength. Though. You need a long rest for that, don't you? Yeah. 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 I'm just weak. I'm, I'll never be strong. One more reason the material plate. Start breaking some rations. Eat some of our food. All right. Let me. 
trap you. Alright, traveling through, you find a spot that presumably is a good spot to camp. <laughs> you know, I'd love, love that GM tone of voice there. But yeah, sure, we'll make a camp there. What could go wrong? You know, the ground opens up and... Goblins come out, drag the, the halfling and all the dwarves down, start singing about it. Uh, I will do this to give, presumably, you guys scouted around to make sure nothing was hiding here, so... I will turn off lighting for a bit to represent. You guys can search around and look and see a bunch of dead ends there. However, there are walls so that you can't actually camp within sight of said caverns and dead ends. This used to be some kind of town square, old settlement of some kind. So you may take your long rest, refresh everything, gain back your hip. Oh, okay, correct. Right. Any long rest? You have time to take a long rest. Everybody want a long rest? I mean, at this point, we've been traveling for like a full day, so. Not so oh, good at rolling okay. boats at my eight strength. Let's do that. Let's do that. Um, And, uh, at some point, during, uh, the middle of the rest or whatever, there was a strange sound in one of the adjacent, uh, on the other side of the wall, the circular wall here. And, uh, soon after that came a few drow that seems like a problem yeah it's a problem there was a drow wizard a drow scout and a drow uh, pc <laughs> ah yes you can tell from the name hovering over their head yes <laughs> indicate which wall again uh, it appeared on the other side over on that other side of that wall. Or the sound was over on the other side of that wall. And then soon afterwards, they came around that corner there. To the north, okay. Yep. Um, yeah. Did we enough to uh, mark everything up for the full rest? Yes. Yes. And okay. it was cool. a fairly short encounter because... Uh, the wizard seemed like the biggest threat at the moment, but he was betrayed by somebody in the back. As drow tend to do. Oh, you're describing something that happened, but okay. Yeah. Fast tracking uh, PC. Fast tracking the introduction of the PC. <laughs> you could have done that with a fight. Oh man, I wanted to attack some drow. Alright, yeah, fine. Stabby, stabby, we can do that. <laughs> I mean, I'm fine either way. But yeah. No, no. You want to fight, you get a fight. 
<laughs> As your cook order <laughs> wants to find out what it really happens with his mace. <laughs> okay, so we still got yeah, Pupito, Jim Jar, and Fergus. Those are the last three survivors. Oh. Okay, so we warily greet our new uh, traveling uh, associate right now, right? Not companion, not a friend, associate. <laughs> uh, just an associate. Business partner. Our, our, business is, our business is continuing to stay alive. He's a traveling uh, intern. intern. I accidentally okay, I made two characters, but the bottom one is the complete one. I don't know how to delete the other one. It should be done. Okay. Well, uh, yes. one of the dwarves introduces himself as Rakuk. I don't... Uh, he's a mace and, and a battle axe and a shield and armor. But he seems to be clerically inclined. Oh, I see. Giselle down there at the bottom? Yeah, the bottom one is the actual one. The one that's like right above the orky Theo... Oh yo, guy. Sorry, I don't know how to pronounce. It. Oh, did it have? Did it have like some randomly generated name on it? Uh, yeah, I accidentally saved it, and then I realized, no, I'm gonna fill it out manually. Okay, okay. There's some wacky auto generated names and did roll twenty for some reason. Yeah, there's so there's two, I guess. The Orkio guy is not real either. Um, all right. The dwarf was just introducing themselves. Uh, let's see. what would my character say? Sort of. Wait, so have all the drow been killed yet, or am I kind of ahead on the party? No, we're going to have a fight here. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Oh, so, okay, like, cool. are the other drow near me is kind of what I'm asking, because my character might respond differently. Yeah, I mean, okay, we're, guys... not, we're, not, we're not doing introductions yet. So, uh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, were go we were going to jump past the fight, now we're going back and doing the fight. Yeah, Giselle, gotcha, gotcha. you okay. are aware that back at the camp, the high priestess seems to have an item of one of the party members that they are able to scry with and then when she gets ready to teleport she can open a teleport because presumably she also has an item that she is familiar with that is in the possession of the party high priest has an item they can teleport they're familiar with another item in the party got that yeah. So she has okay. an item that belongs to one of the characters that she's able to scry on them, and then because she, she is familiar okay. with a magic item that they have, she can open a teleport fairly close. Okay. Let me move you into the party. What's the high priest's name? Or do we know that? I'm just going to use the high priest. I, you would know, but... Yeah, her name was... Ira. Good name for a high priest. Now I gotta get back up to the... Uh... <clears throat> oh, is this the same one high we priest talked about earlier? Ilvara. Ilvara Mizrim. Ilvara. Oh, Mizrim. Was that Got one it. of the that was one of the original two at the camp? Yes. Ilvara and Asha, right. Hey, what the heck happened to my Ah, I got it, okay. Okay, so I, I see. So us recovering those trinkets that we had was somewhat relevant, I take it. Yes, there was one trinket that was unrecoverable. I don't think I ever found mine, so that might be what she's got. Uh, no, I think yours was found. Icon, silver icon of a raven. Oh. Yeah, that was found. Oh, it was. Okay. Impossible. I, I know it's supposed to be incomplete. Add a custom item to your inventory. And then I got, like, two other people's items, which uh still hanging on to. Oh. No, everybody's item should have been handed out. The only one that wasn't recovered was Rakuk's ring. Okay. This is so cool. I love this system. Like when I move my character, the light kind of changes. That's so awesome. Yep. <laughs> Wild. Some neat integration. Yeah. It takes a, it takes a while. It takes a while to set up all the all these kinds of things, which is uh... oh, totally. 
Yeah, yeah, but fortunately, these are like because these are from an officially published module. We got you know they they've already been yeah professional. I'm not gonna lie, I was seriously considering trying to get a couple just so I could like have a set of like maps like already pre-generated. Nice. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Some of them have good maps. Some have not so good maps. Yeah. Like, this one yeah. here is just from a pack that I bought. It's got a Underground Ruins set. Oh, you could just buy packs. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. I might just do that then. That seems easier. I don't really want a whole campaign either, so... This pack is... The, the guy who sells these is usually, like, $5, and you get anywhere between 4 and 8 this size maps, and some have, like, smaller hallways and items that you can toss around in there too a mm. bunch of people doing maps and stuff on patreon and whatever as well Seems yeah nice. patreon well, has some, some stuff good like maps too online. all right what so system? everybody roll initiative because you are not surprised with the teleport you guys had a chance to be noticed click your token and as long as you have oh. initiative in oh. on roll 20 you have a macro up in the upper left corner if not roll 20 i mean uh, D, D beyond okay i just oh no valid token was selected that's what i did wrong yeah you got to click your token yeah let's try this once more I, I will say i've never had an initiative macro in like the top right but if i just click it on my character sheet then it works so I get a... Oh, wow, I rolled well twice in a row. Very nice. He's got a funky initiative number there. Oh, that's the... um. It's got the... I got the score as a decimal, so that it will automatically break ties if there are any ties. I'm oh, going to have to add okay. you manually, because for whatever reason, it doesn't like... Even after last session, when I cleared it, it comes back with the previous tracker, everything that calculated. Is, that is just for you. Like, I yeah. see a tracker with four initiatives on it, but... I see special. all of these things. <laughs> Isn't that helpful? Here, maybe... I can delete the ones that don't matter. But I mean, I have, what on here, five round trackers. I have Fargus, which I haven't even rolled yet, Jim Jar. Obzam, you got a what? I got a 7.12. Even as I rolled a four, uh, okay, I'll be right back. Let me, uh, let me go ahead and. I guess I'm just. We're just going straight ahead with them already on the side of the PC, so I'm just gonna play it like that. I was. Yeah, you can do something else. Backstab but... them whenever you wish here. Okay. Sounds good to me. Let's see. Um, door got a four. Since they already think I'm on their side, can I kind of move back a bit without them opportunity attacking me? Yes. Wonderful. All right, let's go ahead and do that. Gonna sort of shift back a couple squares. Rukuka. Oh, hold on. I haven't rolled NPCs yet. I'm still trying to clear oh. up the <laughs> okay. extraneous. Roll, roll 20 will give you nice maps with visibility from token location. It will also give you uh, some inexplicable glitch you've never seen before every single session that the GM has to clean up. 
What would technology be without inexplicable glitches? I think it's just me that gets the inexplicable glitches. <laughs> You're special. All right, so now it's in order. So Giselle, you are first. Oh, Wait. yes, you can back anyway. up. I'm so used to playing characters that have low dexterity. I'm like, wow, I have an actual initiative bonus here. This is kind of crazy. Um, I'm gonna back up and uh, go ahead and take a pot shot at one of them with my light crossbow. Um. Uh, actually, just for the fun of it, this is probably a waste, but I'll, I'll use my giant, one of my giant forms and transform into a bigger person, so I become large and I get an <laughs> extra 1d6. Um, so with a sort of, I don't know, I don't know if elves roar, but this one does. Uh, I transform into a larger version. And, Do your best uh, stone giant impression. Exactly. Um, I also have, okay, I know this is probably... Andy, but the Cloud Giant one looked a lot cooler, so I chose that one. Um, and it fits with my whole being sneaky theme, too. So, uh, okay. so does that hit? Which one are you shooting at? The uh, one that's... I guess I can just select it. Let's do this one. Like that one. The mage? Yes, that will hit. Yeah. Okay. Um, you should... Uh... I guess that's just the damage, right? 21 damage? No, the or 12 damage, left, sorry. left 12 one damage. is to hit. It rolls two for advantage if or disadvantage. When it's a standard okay. roll, use the one on the left. And then to select your damage, hit tap light crossbow. It should highlight for you. Yeah. And then that will. Okay, and then damage. I do this. Gotcha. Okay. And so also, you might want to roll an extra D. Oh yeah, when you are large, you roll oh, for true. You can just do uh, slash R one d six in the middle. One d six. Doing this wrong. One d six. Have to put a space in there. Ah, yes. Okay. Okay. Interesting. So twelve damage. Okay. Let's see, how long does this giant form last? I think it I think lasts a minute. A minute. Be... A minute, yeah, so that's like six rounds or something. Uh, uh, ten. ten. And then, oh, ten rounds. Sweet. When your turn is over, um, right above your attack roll, there's a box that says it's your turn. There's a EOT in the bottom right corner of that. Right above my attack roll. Is this on my character sheet or the turn no, order? No, in the, in, the in the chat. Ice log on the right. Oh, in the chat. Got it. Oh, e okay, got it. Yeah, good? Yep. All right, Bupito uh, curses. They found us. They found us. I don't know how, but they found us. Run for it, Mart. Oh, wait. He is not much of a combatant, so he is going to go that way. Understandable. And maybe sneak around and get... Uh, Glabogul is like... What's going on? Who are these people? Who are you people? And, and of course, the trial responds with uh, full and proper introductions to uh, to, to the 
the, the ball of slime the currently requesting two that, uh, drow there get um, very obvious looks of derision on their face as they glance at, in this direction of where nothing is visible because it's not moving yeah. they're, they're kind of <laughs> looking around like what the hell was that but Vupito isn't doing anything yet, so Fargus. Ah, oh, shit. Uh, Fargus. Uh, he's gonna go behind Rakuk. And because he's a halfling. He gets to attempt to s hide behind the dwarf. Behind the dwarf. And he crits his hide roll. Uh, the scout. Traitor. Uh, he turns and he is going to charge backwards and attack uh, his who he thought was an ally. Crush your sudden but inevitable betrayal. Yeah, does a 17 hit? Giselle. Yes. Yes, it does. All right. Five piercing damage. And he All gets right. to make a second one. Does a 12 hit? No. Okay. And he misses. And a Jim Jar. not actually in a square he's gonna go to there and uh, fire off his light crossbow or his hand crossbow rather uh, 12 hits no sneak attack though so just three Obzam, you are up. Um, all right. Well, I know an opportunity when I see one. Uh, well, I'll go ahead and rush forward. Of course. And yet again, the drow fall to their own treachery. But I will help them on the way down. And I'll go ahead and use my lightsaber. I'm sorry. Legally distinct laser sword. <laughs> ah, yes. There we are. All right. All right. Uh, it'll be 21 to hit for 6 radiant damage. It's it's a saber that only weighs half a pound. It is a light <laughs> space saber. But is it a light weapon? Don't think so. You're using it two-handed? I'm using it two-handed. Bastard. <laughs> Alright, he... Well, Ah, no, wait a minute. Oh, no. Shield wouldn't matter. Not against 21, I hope. No. Shield and don't. also, he can enjoy a lovely uh, booming blade, so uh, I recommend not moving. Remain next to the fighter. All right, his turn... You shall return with us one way or another. And he is going to... Uh, 
unfortunately he can't get to everybody here so uh xandor rakukin obzam i need um dexterity saving throws and we are standing in a straight line aren't we as he raises his hands in the air that crackle with electricity and he pulls his shoves his hands forward and a lightning bolt all right for some strange reason it clicked like three times so so i will just go ahead and roll again you know this uh, this, this the first one seems potentially painful i'm gonna we go with i'm the, gonna go uh, ahead and spend an inspiration on this one I'm happy to take the first one if you are. I just yeah. I don't know which one. If it multiplies, I don't mind taking the first one in the sequence. Okay. And yeah. with yes, an inspiration. We don't do normal inspiration where you have to where you roll advantage. You can if it matters, but you can use it as a re-roll as well. All right, uh, Rakuk, got a deck save? And then Beyond is now no longer working for me. Uh, I, I had a, a session with another game yesterday, and someone was using Beyond, and it just crapped out on them, so I just made a first-level character for them on a Google Doc in 10 minutes. I tried, tried to rebuild their character as best I could. Which was, uh, I hate trusting technology. I hate not nice owning things. <laughs> well, you know, if, if purchasing isn't ownership, then uh, exactly. piracy isn't theft. Yeah. I feel. Do you wish to use a... a... I had to get Voodoo back. I'm yeah, I can't happy. even roll from your sheet. It's just popping up a, a sidebar, and that's it. Yep, 17. He, everybody breaks beyond. All right, let's see here if I can do this. Is it going to roll for me? So, all three of you succeeded, so you take, uh, what is that, 16 damage. All right. Obzam will raise one of his hands and catch some of the lightning in it, casting uh, Absorb Elements. And uh, to, uh, Fargus, unfortunately, has to roll also, even though he was hidden. He is okay. How much damage did uh sixteen? I will also absorb some elements on that. <laughs> the lightning is a surprise tool that will help us later. Because I don't like taking two thirds of my HPs and damage. Yep, yep, third I'm sorry, was that Fireball 16? lightning bullet After... Yeah. Sixteen with a successful save. Ooh. It was uh that was that was thirty two right there. It's only slightly above average. Ouchie. No spell still work. No, maybe throw it up. Now the question: Do I try to? Melee attack. I can give him a zap. Let's see. Does he do anything else? I think he should move back. That's a good idea. Let's 
Yeah, he doesn't have anything he can do as a bonus action. Oh, he should have done that. Okay. Nope. That's it. Xandor, you're up. Don't worry, I'm sure I'll have another chance next turn. <laughs> uh, one, two, three, four. Uh, do these pillars count for your cover of any kind, or are they just kind of... No, they're just... obstacles. Okay. Uh, I will cast Maximilian's Earth and Grass... And uh, this fighter man can try and make a strength saving throw, I believe it is. Strength saving throw. The mage? This guy in front. Who I guess? I don't know. He could go either way. Yeah, strength saving throw. Thanks. You got a four. I'm sure he's very good at this. Yeah. Take 2d6 damage and you become restrained. And he, total damage. He curses in under common. I understand that. Uh, and then that'll be my turn. Oh, actually, hold on. I'll take five foot step this way, so as to not be in a line again. That's the end of my turn. Rakuk, you are up. Now I'm going to move up. And I'm going to cast Scatter. Putting the 10 foot sphere. Oops, I accidentally drew a line. But essentially, like that. But it, uh, so that it catches both the priest and the, the guy who uh, ran up. You see that? Yeah. What do they have to do? Don save. Don save, yep. Eighteen for the mage. Keep in mind his advantage was cancelled by the hand. I'm sorry, what? Normally draws get advantage against spells, right? Mm, Only no. charm. Oh, okay. Don't worry about that. No problem. Um, charmed, and they can't be put to sleep. Yeah, I think I'm thinking demon. And the scout gets a five. Okay, so the scout takes 11. Priest, the mage takes five. Yeah, they lost their spell resistance in 5e with uh, them being a player character race and all. And removing level adjustments, so. I think it's a little OP for a player race to have one of the more powerful abilities, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It, it used to be like back in back in three point five, you could play like 
you could play some races that had some really crazy stuff on them, but you'd, oh, yeah. be, you'd have level adjustments. You'd be one or two levels below everyone else. You are a drow. I think I you count that. as level three with no classes. I think I saw that and I was like, ooh, how many levels would I need to play a mind player? Like, you know, obviously level 14. Or uh, all right, Giselle, you are up again. Yep. Um, so I have this idea. I think when I'm in this giant form, I get a advantage to strike decks. I don't know if it works this way, but when I was playing Baldur's Gate, uh, shove was a bonus action. Is that still the case here? Uh, core rules, uh, using I a think... shove or grapple replaces one of your attacks. Yeah. Okay, so no. Um, in that case, I will attempt to poke this, uh, person in front of me with my pointy stick. Your extremely large pointy stick now. Well, yes, actually, it's probably a <laughs> bit more than a stick. Let's try, like, a free branch or something like that. <laughs> the damage type changed to bludgeoning. <laughs> it's not really a point anymore, is it? No, no. There's there's still a point. There's just a lot more behind. It's just basically, it's, you know, a spear. <laughs> yeah, it's a spear. It's a lance. All right. Uh, go ahead. Uh, geez. Okay, I don't think that's gonna hit, right? Ten. That doesn't hit. I can tell you yes or no, but then you can't use inspiration if you wished to. Oh, gotcha. Um, so I'd have to choose now. Um, all right, I will use an inspiration to re-roll. Okay. See if I get so here, so I click the inspiration, right? Yeah, click it. It should open up a window, and you can drag one out onto the table. Okay, I'm gonna do that and then close it that there keep the highest so okay so i'm just gonna click it again yep oh -ho! Got a crit. Yeah, got a crit. Crit. Okay. no nasty things against crits here right so all right i'll go ahead build the damage and it's 2d8 right uh no the damage I mean... of the weapon well it should automatically should but didn't. I don't huh. think it did. I probably didn't set it up right. Let's see. Um, I put a crit as one d. Oh, I should have. Hold on. So what happens on a crit? Uh, you you Roll double the, the damage dice. die again. So, okay, so crit two d eight. Yeah, two d eight, and you're also because you get your bonus d six from the giant form, going to be adding two d six instead of one. Ooh. Okay, so yeah, you I'm going to just roll the two d six. Manually yeah. roll one d eight plus two d six. Yeah. Um, or 1d8, and can I just do plus 2d6 yes. here, and it'll, it'll, it'll add it. it, okay. Yay! Oh, wow. Oh, boy. Crap oh. roll. That is, that, that's, oh, that is, that's, that's unfortunate. That's, we don't, that is we don't a very that. unfortunate roll. Oh, wow. Not the same damage as my other weapon attack, but okay, we'll take it. <laughs> However, that is enough to down the Drow Scout. Oh, okay. I'll take it. <laughs> Hold up. That was eight below average. Yeah. Yeah, that was not a good roll. Twelve average of twenty. Yep. Nope. That's not a good roll. Alright, I should pass my turn. Hold on. There we go. Alright, Rupido. Uh, a... What is he, a Darrow? I forget. He is a Darrow. A Darrow comes around the outside wall, uh, sees the situation of a dead drow laying at the feet of a large drow, uh, and backs up a little bit. Not quite sure what's going on with the dead drow and the large drow. And he can't actually attack the mage anyway, so he wants to get out of line of sight. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yes, we're hurting these ones, Glad Ghoul. Yeah. They're, going to, they're going to try to kill us. I can't. So we try to kill them first. I can't. Yeah. 
If I move closer, Sandra, I will right hurt you. Ah, don't worry about it. You got it taken care of. All right, Fargus. He just uh, got hit by lightning. He just got hit by lightning. Uh, he is going to fire his light crossbow. With advantage, because he's hidden. Ooh. Uh, 14 hits. And the drow mage falls. Okay. Abzam will sniff in mild disappointment as he lets the captured lightning dissipate. And... Then... Then go ahead and point a sword at the giant drow in the back. Yeah, in, in uh, your guys' heads, you hear Glabigol. There's one more back there. Uh, yes, Glabigol, there's one more, but... Uh seems to be engaging in some drow there, treachery. You! You're going to try to kill us. There were two a moment ago. Now there's one. I know. Sorry, what was that? No. What's I your wish... angle? Attacking would... the other, Attacking the others. I've spent, I don't know how many days has it been? Like a week? Two weeks? I've spent two weeks tracking you with this party. I'm glad I finally found you. I'm looking to join, join, if you're taking any members. Join? Now, what would make a drow do that? You do you do know these, these gestures to the two dead drow on the ground are going to keep on coming for us, right? My uh, character points to the mask. Uh, I'll be alright. They won't be able to recognize me after I switch this. I also have some discussions to have with the high priest we don't get along anymore uh, some kind of this some kind of house war nonsense one drow um, house trying to murder another no this is more personal it's of a of a more uh, personal matter to me but we're not going there or at least we're not trying to. That's fine. Why are you doing this? For now, I'm just looking to get away. Escape away is out fine. Of horrid place. Leave. Anywhere but here is where I would like to go. How did they find go. us? We've been moving quickly. I, the dark I was able to glean the location uh, as an offering of the trust i hope to share between you the high priest of our misram is able to track you they have an item that uh, they can use to scry on you they also might be able to move to your a location nearby i don't know if you're mm. aware of that Did i get that right well we are now we are now. The okay. And we have some arcane casters. You may roll arcana if you wish. Yeah, sure. Why not? Sure. Thirteen. Uh, Sander just gets a look of concentration as he looks from each uh, previously acceptable party member to the next, and then we'll just hear a, his voice go. Drow do love their treachery. Uh. So, thirteen. Give me anything on that. Yeah, with a thirteen, um, you've heard that teleportation spells either need a familiar location, a familiar person, or a familiar object.
Hmm. And you guys well. have somewhat recently secured an object from a scouting party. Yes. Perhaps this sending stone isn't the best plan. Hanging on to that. Huh, well, if they're using teleportation, then I guess we don't need to worry so much about covering our tracks normally. But we'll need to start worrying about uh, what item. Who, who in particular would they be scrying on? Is there any way to break that? Uh, Tim's going to go off into... Mumbling and mumbling into theories for a minute or two, trying to make any connections you can. Uh, check the body of the mage. See if they have anything on them. Uh, the body of the mage. They do have something on them. Cook, roll me a d100. On this drow mage, there is 210 silver in a pouch, along with 110 gold. That's seven betrayals. that yet again to he also has concerningly heavy pile of silver we have um in another in another pocket in his robes he has a small box um rather carefully carved nothing super ornate or anything but care was taken in carving this box it has a little slide latch so it doesn't accidentally come open but it's not hidden or anything like that you can slide the latch and open it and there are several different sized buttons in this box okay he also oh, does he have a spell book he has one potion, he does have a spell book, and he has a wand. Oh, right. Oh, Sam will hang on to the spell book. Potion, wand, book, but he also has a pouch and a box. And in addition, he has uh, 22, 132 gold equivalent. Yeah, I've got the I've got the coins written down. Oh. Although I am keeping track of them separately for weight reasons. Anything in the pouch other than the coins? Uh, miscellaneous spell components? No, not in that point. He has a spell component pouch. The coin pouch okay. just has coins. Right. Display the box to our new. In this, the new, uh, uh, also has um, a quarter staff that fell to the ground. It's just a quarter staff. You know what this box is? I've never seen that before. So this high priestess with the item that they're using to describe on us. 
is the one that teleported this you you here? Yeah. She is the one that could teleport. Hmm. Is that me in an attempt to find you? Apparently they still have something. Ah, well, if they still can if they can teleport, then running won't do much good. We're going to keep on getting hit and well, at some point, they might actually they might actually estimate our strength correctly. That would well, be a difficult day. This item you have is it of any concern to you? Would it not no, be better? No, just to you can dispose of that. Well, in fact, you know, I'll just go ahead and pull out the sending stone. Uh, <laughs> Obzam is petty enough for this. He's just going to go ahead and activate it and throw in a string of dwarven curse words and then drop it on the ground and boot. Okay. Slam it aggressively on the ground like it's a receiver. <laughs> am I am I able to destroy it like that or is the magical resilience prevent that? No, you can destroy it like that. All right. <laughs> Well, hopefully that should stop the teleporting, but I'm concerned about the scrying still. Not okay, much to be done about on, that now. Anything on the body of the scout? Uh, he has a short sword and a longbow. And leather armor. Did somebody armor. make an attack with a hand crossbow? Or is that one of the uh, player characters? One of the player characters had the hand crossbow. Okay. Actually, I think most of the player characters have hand crossbows. We, we got a ton of those earlier. Do you, do you need one for something? Uh, yeah, the uh, build I'm planning uses a couple hand crossbows. I, yeah, we all had, like, it was the only ranged weapon we could find. They are completely useless to me as my dexterity is a 12. Oh. But, you know. Well, I have an 18. I would much appreciate it. one or two. All right. All right. Okay. Well, toss somebody to grab a goal. Hey, grab a goal. <laughs> Food. Uh, Something about this is deeply right. Disturbing. Well, do you know? Are there any other patrols in the area? Anything that might find us, or is it no. only the teleportation? I made sure this was the only one. I didn't want any potential issues after I found you. Hmm. At least immediate issues. Well, in the immediate area. I can't speak to. Uh, do you know anything about left. what's going on with the demons down here? Would I know that? Um, the only thing you know about demons were... Um, Priestess was planning on summoning some. Several several weeks ago, some demons of uh, Avrock and several Kazmis, no, two Vrocks and several Kazmis, came in from the Underdark and slaughtered a few of the drow and that was when these the player characters escaped from their captivity so they have been on high alert for demon activity but you don't know any specifics now nothing as so far I know a couple of weeks back we they dropped oh, you broke I think up. that was you were attacked. Oh. Uh, uh, nothing as so far. A couple of weeks ago, the drow were attacked by two Vrock and several Tasmids. Hmm. So I suppose they don't know about the Demogorgon yet. No, not that I'm aware of. I'd uh, really prefer if we stop saying that name. That's disconcerting them just tossing around that name. <laughs> <laughs> reasonable, reasonable. All right. Well, it's like you know, when something like that's on the same plane as you, it's just t taking some unnecessary risks to, to keep saying it like that. Uh, fine. Well, that's that's not an unreasonable point. Well, we should continue. We should get moving again. Uh, we're heading to Blingdenstone. You might want to. Uh, Cover up a bit there. Want me to cast the, the tech magic on the stuff we got from the tomb? That was twice now, right? If somebody says it one more time. Ah, yeah. 
<laughs> Gotta be looking in a mirror. Oh, wait, but you don't have an octopus to eat this time. So it felt like cast to take magic on the stuff that we got? Yeah, it'll also let us know if there's any conspicuous enchantments on a very conspicuous drow. We all look at the drow. Look, 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 look at Dawnbringer. Hey, are you magical? Just wondering. All right, you cast detect magic. Um, from this lot, the wand is magical. Shocking. Shocking. The potion is magical. Another stomper, yeah. Let's see, from the past stuff you hadn't checked yet... I assume the drow dagger is also magical. What about the, the, the box with buttons? That one magical? No. No? Okay. Let's see, from the chest you got the necklace is magical, obviously, necklace of fireball. Um, the two potions you got from that chest are magical. I believe we had already identified those as healing potions. From the... Uh, the f oozing temple, the dagger is magical. Is there anything else you have that you are unsure of? Uh, we do have a potion of brown, silver, and gray liquid separate into layers we got at the Ooze Temple. Ah, uh, yes. I'm assuming it's magical because it's a potion, but... It also has an item description. Oh, does it? Well, in that it's got colors and that they're separated yeah, yeah. and that... You know, it's not just blue potion. Mm -hmm. uh, the brown, silver, and gray liquid separated into layers is a potion of climbing. Ooh. You can do a taste test on that. Well, that um, can come in handy. There were other potions you had that you can do a quick test on um, one of the ones you found in the ooze was not a potion but an oil and upon touching the oil it's like dipping your hand in WD-40 slipperiness uh, it's oil yeah and then Slippery. one more potion that you found in the tomb in the invisible chest uh, it has a rose hued effervescent liquid and upon studying it, there is like a single bubble floating around in it, shaped like a heart. And that I one, you get the sense it's did. a filter of love. Okay. Filter of love, okay. Got some roofies. Okay. Magical though. That is a that is certainly it's certainly an item we have now. All right, all right. Well, well that takes some of the stress off. We don't have to like be in such a rush now. Admittedly they can teleport and find us when they need to, but we you know, running isn't gonna help us now. They'll still be following our Whatever we're doing with that scrying, which I am not a fan of, but nothing to be done about it now, so. Uh, I'm going to assume since we just did like a, a rest here that we have like a fire or fire pit going of some kind. Uh, yeah, I'll... there is a, a little indentation in the center. It looks like it may have once been a fountain. You can have a fire going in there. 
tweet. Uh, I'm going to ask for the bottle of the box of buttons. Nope. Oh, see what? You couldn't have it. No, the then I will roll them into the fire. Okay. And we all look at the drow again. Sentimental trinket goes up in flames. I don't have any reaction. It's not my trinket. Is it anybody here's trinket, or was it one of the players that I believe? No, that was nobody's trinket. That was the mage's trinket. <laughs> oh, okay. He just had that, yeah. Well, yeah, well, he collects you know, buttons off of the people he kills. So what? <laughs> I was assuming they were buttons from people they were tracking that they were using for scrying and other magics. Hey, so, what if the what if the drow just had something because he liked it, not because of? Have you met the drow? They're awful people. <laughs> oh, awesome. Um, do you happen to remember if he said a command word for the wand? He never drew it out. We capped his ass. Oh, oh yeah, pull pull it out. Recruit Wait, point at the wall. wall. Shoot! You killed him uh, too fast. Okay, ah, on. yeah, important. Rakuk wasn't close enough to know that, though. So he asked. He kind of assumed the wand was the wand of lightning. Ah, uh, no. Lightning wasn't from the wand. That was, that was just his own power. Uh, I show it to the drow. Any idea what this does? Again, not mine. I barely knew. Yeah, but you were around these people. Okay, well, w would I have any idea what this does? No. No. Is there any indication Mostly on it kept that to ourselves. Let me see. Is there any indication on it? Something written in drow? It uh, is a small... It is a metallic wand with uh, almost like a widely spaced drill bit pattern of rings going up towards the end of it, where a blue, kind of a blue flame seems to be at the end. Either jeweled or just ornately uh, crafted. Yeah, well, we lost the artificer in the bard, so... I, I guess we have to fiddle with identify. it. But the, we'll have to fiddle with it. Uh, spellbook here might have it identifying it. Yeah, check 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 through the spellbook, see if there's any any notes he's jotted down about his item in there. But it's probably just the spells. Where are you heading next? Uh, we were going to look for Blingdenstone, city of the deep gnomes. Over that way. Uh, think. Uh, got a bit turned around to the Dark Lake. Dark Lake. What were you doing there? Uh, running one. mostly. You've been. Uh, we were we going away you... from the Demogorgon and toward the deep gnomes. <laughs> Here's the third time. <laughs> Yep. Uh, I told what? you, you need to be looking into a mirror. None okay. of the drow would be aware of this, right? I'm correct in assuming that. Uh, not of Demogorgon, no. Okay. He's allowed to say it. He doesn't count. Yeah, I'm allowed to just okay. summon him at will, so. Shit. Not again. So no, the drow, as far as you are aware, and you weren't mistreated there, so you weren't really shared, w uh, they didn't share a whole lot of information with you. But as far as you can tell, they had no clue that Demogorgon had recently appeared in the Underdark. Uh. Um, as a drow, let me do player handouts here. So 
so here's a rough map of the Underdark. Mm. The uh, encampment is in the uh, kind of between Dark Lake and Arumikos. There's Velkenvive. It's a tiny little dot there. Yeah. To the northwest of that is Slubladop. That was where they mm. were when Demogorgon had, was summoned. And they are now traveling along the uh, kind of counterclockwise along the Dark Lake heading towards Grackelstuch. Gotcha. Yeah, I, hate, I hate the names of these places. Uh, okay. So. Heading towards the dwarf city. Why are you heading there? What are you looking to clean? Well, some place you lies where we can look into getting up to the surface. Yes, yes. Deep gnomes tend to be friendly enough, uh, well connected, and place you can actually spend money properly. So we'll see if they have any trade routes to the surface you might be able to take advantage of. I wouldn't know any um, other. Like roots or something, right? Uh, I've technically lives here. Yeah, not really. Yeah. Okay. I figured. Uh, okay. That seems best to me. I'm really just along for the ride here. I'd rather just leave as soon as possible. I mean, the Drow in general are aware of some of the major cities of the other races. Grackelstuch being a Duragar city. Slubladop being a Koatoa city, which the drow generally avoided because Koatoa are alien and mad. So it's really hard to get along Fair with enough. them. Um, other cities, there are uh, Neverlight Grove, which is a home of the Myconids. Uh, Blingdenstone. Okay is home of the Deep Gnomes. What about Menzo Baron? And... Oh, every drow knows about that. Okay. That's capital. You are either very welcome there or not. I mean, is anyone really welcome in Menzo Baran, Sam? The nobility. <laughs> but even there <laughs> are very hostile towards nobility, but de depending on what how your house you're in. Yeah, but isn't it a big city? So like Yeah, it's know, a big city. One individual drow is probably not gonna like stand out too much. No, it's probably easy for individual drow to get lost in Menzo Branson. Alright, so the long rest is done. You guys may take a short rest to recoup from a lightning bolt. Well, I'll spend uh, some hit dice. Uh, that is so strange. Three should do it, probably. Hey, I think I can just get a second wind, because it's a short rest, so I'll just use that. Yeah, anything that recoups on a short rest, you can do as well. Yeah, I've got 13. I'm back to full. Hey, so you, you can proceed through the uh, cavern. Oh, also, uh, I, I assumed this was implied, but just to be clear, well, we appreciate you stabbing the drow in the back. If you stab us in the back, we will be killing you immediately. Uh, just when they stab us in the back. Yeah, yeah. Just, just in case. Just in case that was unclear. Oh, I think that was clear from the beginning. Good. Good. Sounds like my wife's character in Deadlands. We had a harrowed character, and it's like, if you ever go mad, I'm shooting you in the head. I'm putting you down. <laughs> reasonable, reasonable. So you came from uh, the 
southeast. Uh, the way out is to the north and west. Traveling through, you quickly get back to the lake, to the water. Okay, we deploy the boat. Hey, um, Owen, do you want me to put that down on my seat? You want to hang on to the boat? Sure. Yeah, I'll add it to my inventory. During the short rest, could we have figured out what some of those magic items did? Which magic items? Did you want to pick up the Would you like to mess with? Uh, how many unidentified do we have? Let's see. We've got the wand. We've got the uh, the drow dagger. Uh, da, da, da. We've got the potion. We took off the drow mage. Oh, that potions you can eat fairly easily, unless it's a very uh, obscure. Yeah. That one's just a healing potion. All right. Um, the wand and the dagger. The dagger is fairly easy to tell that it is a bit sharper and sturdier than a normal dagger. When you slide your thumb across it, it does one extra point of damage to you. <laughs> classic, classic. Uh, the wand... If somebody's playing with the wand, give me an Arcana check. I'm happy to with my plus three, or if someone needs. I hear no takers. I don't Ooh, have a boy. better Arcana check than that. All right. That's a six. Uh, with a six, you manage to not control it very well. Um, you're playing with the wand, and upon a certain motion or whatever, you... Let me roll here. Eh, only two. Uh, you hit it, and four magic missiles fly out of it. Oh, it's a gat. So you use <laughs> two charges of it. You don't know how many more remain this day. Oh, okay. Just kind of give it a little twirl and put it into the, uh, the pocket. A wand of magic measles. But safe to say, you must have killed a lot of drow. But not enough. Correct assumption. Not enough. <laughs> no. Would it be enough to have a bare set of hand crossbows? I look at everybody else with the idea of arming this stranger. Eh, he's already armed. What harm could it do? <laughs> I'll pull out, pull out one of the one of the spare hair, hand crossbows you got hanging around. And pack of bolts and toss it and toss them over uh yeah i can hand mine over too i don't sweet oh not an appreciation my thanks <laughs> wand of magic missiles is now in the treasure Ooh. section for you So is the uh, oil of slipperiness. The filter of love. Potion of climbing in there. Uh, 
All right. Uh, halfway through the day on the lake. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, so traveling with them, they get to the water shore and they pull out a little package, set it on the ground, speak the command word, and it folds out into a ship. Ah, that's handy. Yes, a, uh, a useful gift from the Kuotoa that we ran into. Oh, that's fish people. May their souls find rest. I doubt it. <laughs> you remember what happened when we were there? The... What happened? Ah, well, the... The demon that we mentioned, it... When blood was spilled in the water, it came, and it... Well, we didn't stay to see what happened, but... Seems unlikely that anyone there survived. We left some good people behind. It's not Tender. the lingers. Uh, Tender just kind of like holds his hand up and just kind of shakes it back and forth like... <sighs> Um, Bupito is with you, and as you guys now are getting closer to Grackelstoof, he, uh, kind of, you know, gathers everybody for a quick meeting. Um, now, the Blade Bazaar might be a good spot to get some gear and equipment, uh, but... And he glances at the new drow. They tend not to like drow, so I don't know if we wish to disguise him or. Um, he said he had a mask. Maybe pretend he's Pull a out my mask. prisoner. This be of any use? Mm. Sort of use this? Maybe somewhat. It doesn't negate close inspection. I don't have any need to get close. Uh, some of them I'm might end of... up getting close regardless. Mm. And we may need some kind of cover story to explain why exactly we have a drow with us, although the... I mean, I can I can try to help persuade anybody that is questionable about it. But I have not been here since I've been captured either, so my word only goes so far. You just play the prisoner game. Ah, uh, yes. Prisoner. I do, not, I do not wish to be taken prisoner by a group I don't fully trust yet. Maybe oh. there's another solution? It's you that doesn't trust us. How funny. How funny. Oh, it's just... not that I don't trust you. I just don't wish to be... Trust you. In don't trust position. us. Yes, yes. Well, feelings mutual. How long can uh, you stay big? Oh, the bigness faded already. How long can yeah, you stay yeah. big? Uh, one minute. Not, not long. Oh, okay. Mm. At least like that, you're clearly not just a drow. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Mm. Is there any kind of like face paint or something I could use to try to make myself into just a normal humanoid that looks a little crazy? I mean, I look sort of like a clown. Uh, the mask might get you part of the way there. Maybe just a 
cloak and then wear the hood down and well that might not get you through the gate so well need Mm. oh one of us can bring something out if we need to now another thing i should warn you guys uh duragar can become invisible whenever they want and they often do so don't do anything questionable or illegal or um, hostile because you never know when you may be watched. Okay. Concerning. Well. So, so just one of us want to go in and get something for our new intern. We could go on ahead, get some equipment for disguise, and then come back out to get him. Uh, well, it'd be hard to get Gabagool in there anyway. Hmm, yes. Well, very easy to get Gabagool in there, but only a matter of time before someone walks into him in the street. True. Is there another cover story than a prisoner? Maybe I'm just a helpful well, drow? I think you could just say, you know, you are who you are. I don't think that... We could probably convince people. Yeah, hard I enough. mean, we all escaped from the, the drow, so we can go with that. Not exactly yeah. fond of the place I came from either, so... Well, well they yeah. may... It's not too... Un- it's not that uncommon for drow to turn on their own for one reason or another. It's... Enemy of my enemy is a well a good ally for now. They may have, they may appreciate that, but also we may wish to keep things subtle. Well, some will certainly notice, but if that number's smaller, it will probably be better for I'll us. Keep the, I'll keep the mask on and the hood up. If anybody inquires, I'll. Yes, then we ha- we do have an explanation, and it's the truth, which uh, isn't that convenient. Now, I know a an inn that is open to outsiders, to non, uh, non-Duragar, so we can, like, try to discreetly land and head straight to there. Uh, yes, fair enough. We'll take, a. we'll take your recommendation. All right. Uh, Bupito kind of guides you guys as you start getting closer. You start to see the uh, basically glow from the city. Ah, the light of civilization. Looks like most of the city as you approach seems to be lit by a dim red, hellish red glow. There's patches of darkness here and there. There's a clanging and clacking of hammers and machinery echoing constantly through here. Uh, Also... There seems to be uh, like smoke and haze in the air. As you approach. Ah, oh, the smell of the forge. Good for the lungs, you know. Builds builds them up strong. But yes, you so this can is... easily uh, slip in with some observation uh, when there's no patrols nearby. Uh, fold up the boat really quick. Um, Glabagol can stay here. He seems to be able to submerge so he can stay uh, in the water. Or I can go with you, but... Uh, I doubt that would end well. Uh, very sure. Yeah, ex- accidents will happen. You know, one of the one of the gnomes will accidentally wander into you. Oh, yeah. I can warn him. 
Not sure that would make things thing. better or worse. You need to find something that you can't dissolve. Like, maybe glass? I just have this mental picture of him hanging out in, like, the docks. And people going fishing and just pulling up a gelatinous cube. Yeah, that's what we need. We need some marbles. Casting out their line, pulling up an eaten away string. Yeah. And all the poor fish that just kind of swim into him. <laughs> Fishies. I mean, I just like a block of water water. or a block of air underwater. Uh, Invisible. That's all it says. Yeah, but like, what's an invisible creature underwater look like? That's still invisible. Invisible. (laughs) You can't see them, but do do you see nothing there? Do you see water there? Uh, Based on how, like, seeing through glass underwater kind of just extends it, I would imagine it just looks like water. It would okay. look like nothing's uh, there until you swim into it. Let's uh, head into town and make some inquiries. Let's find a... I would like to sleep on a bed again. All right. Probably find some marbles here. Does anybody need anything from the town? I mean, we need some supplies, rations, etc. Anything specific? No. Wouldn't mind a couple of things. Yeah, I'm due to some better armor now that we've got the money to actually afford a few things. I would do. Armor could be pricey. All right. So you guys wait for a moment, get on board, quickly fold the boat, and. Lupito's like, we need to keep a, a low profile until we at least get into the to the inn. So I need a group stealth check. Oh, dear. So wait, we are all rolling? Or? Everybody rolls, and half of you have to succeed. I have bad news for you there. So Yeah, uh, but Fargus and Jim Jar can help boost your average. I have um, enhanced right if anybody feels that it is. Am I right in saying that, that guidance won't help because it's more than an action? It's going to take time. Yeah, guidance won't help. You can guide one person, probably. Uh, no. If, you, if I can, I'll do it myself. But other than that, just nonchalantly trying to be stealthy, chanting your magic. Yeah, you can guide one. You can do guidance on one person. Okay. Probably but since myself, you're all moving there. as a group, you can't like hit everybody. Uh, does anybody want a little enhanced ability? Got a decent, uh, stealth, but probably more stealthy people. I already rolled, got a... Okay. Got the 10 there. Sick, I have the best dice. You really do. From now on, every spell I take will be... Focus is failing? Okay, okay. I probably fail if I get a nine. I, you ever just get wonder if we're gonna get kind of get arrested today? You know? Well, Jim Jar at least helps bring up your average. Fargus and Bo- well, Bupito's okay. Fargus sucked. He really did. I expect better from a halfling. Fargus is like tripping over anvils and hammers laying on the ground. Something into Invisible Drugar. Hey, buddy, watch where you're going. Hey, I'm walking here. Alright, so there are seven total. Uh, 
unfortunately, you guys don't manage to avoid all of the attention. Uh, you are sneaking through through the city, kind of watching. Uh, you occasionally see some Duragar um, kind of going in and out of some, some buildings off to the side or coming around on the docks. You manage to, to, you know, watch them, make sure they're not watching everything. And just as you are about to go into this particular building... Uh, which of you has the highest passive perception? Not me. I only got a plus one. Oh, I have a 14. That beats me. Well, the cleric, right? So, Giselle has the highest passive now? Oh, okay. You said you had a plus four, a 14? Uh, yeah, I have a 14. Yeah, I think that's the highest. I also have advantage on insight, if that would make any difference. Uh, no, you don't need the insight. Um, you see... I think I have a handout. And upon seeing this, you're wondering how you missed it. You're wondering how everybody missed it. Yep. But uh, kind of, where are you guys? Like uh, down here, it looks like uh, having an audience, there are several Duragar around it talking to it. If you've seen the D&D movie, you see Thembashad. Thembashad. A rather large, dragon. portly red dragon. Oh! And while it is, it seems to be standing, sitting there not doing much as other people around it are obviously trying to engage it, trying to talk to it. It is watching you guys as you are ducking into the inn. I, I actually speak Draconic, so I could actually talk to this thing in its native language. <laughs> just saying. Um, yeah. But yeah, I it's a I'll good you know, 300, 400 feet away from you at the moment, so it's not within speaking distance. And it just seems to be watching you guys as you duck into the inn. Interesting. Okay. Um, and yeah, nobody else good. noticed it. You were too busy watching for the really close things to make sure that, you know, that guard over there didn't spot you and stuff. Nobody even saw the dragon. Okay. So just as we step inside, I'll kind of motion to the other party members, hey, there's a dragon over there kind of watching us as we stepped inside yep. watching us in particular yes oh that's bad great at us that seems bad uh, uh stop a dragon from killing you and then Bupito dragon yeah a red one how big is it uh it was big Uh, huge, so, you know. That's oh. a huge dragon. Thimbershot. Hmm? Do you know him? Uh, no, he's, he's the city's, uh, what do they call him? Wormsmith? What? He, uh, um, I guess he, he makes his rounds through the cities. He keeps the smelters and forges going. 
and as such, they uh, the city gives him treasure and meals and stuff. Do they There's some sort of special forges? Um. Yes, I think. Yes, I think. Yeah. Okay, it just say? seems like lit by dragon fire, probably special. Yeah. Why do you have a forge fetish? No, it's just I am aware of fire, so curious as to why they need to go through. And he just kind of motions out to the emptiness of the city because he didn't see where the dragon was. He wasn't paying that much attention, and. uh just seems like a huge liability, you know, to have a dragon in your midst like that. Maybe they need fire and can't produce it for themselves. Go. Okay. Is this the end? Yes, yes. And uh, you see other people in here? Uh... There happens to be a few orcs in view. A um, couple... Um, a few goblins that seem to be in chain next to some Duragar that are sitting at a table. Eye everything warily. And a few other, you know, underdark races, but no drow. Hmm. Find the innkeep and see how much a couple rooms will cost us. Alright. Maybe there's meals too here we can get, or we might have to go to another place. Let's see, the inn will cost you. I want spell casting services. There is a Duragar that happens to be, seems to be the proprietor. Who is approaching him? I will. I feel like so. I mean, I could go. I've only got eight charisma, but I could talk to people. <laughs> I could talk to him too, but you know, I don't know how uh, um, how he would feel about the Kithyanki just kind of like rolling up. Yeah, he speaks yeah. Uh, dwarvish as you approach, Rukuk. Ah, welcome. Can I help you? Thank you. We need uh, some rooms. Three or four, if you have them available. And meals? Do you have any meals? I do. Uh, rooms, four rooms, cost you two gold a day. And for meals, how many? That is within the typical, but, but yeah, enough for like six people. Yeah. 
Uh, it's three silver per person. Pain advance. Okay. So, so that's like uh, so, so four rooms, two gold a day each, and then about another... Ten gold average, typical. Yeah, about ten, ten gold a day, fair enough. Does that seem like Weaver, extortion? Wave over at Optum. Um, considering that on the Astral, you don't really have to pay for places to sleep and eat. Yeah, I don't sleep and eat. This <laughs> sucks. I hate it. And this, like, it's the stuff that happens after you eat. Ugh. Uh, it's we horrible, probably should. Horrible. Uh, Inkeep, uh, do you have, um, directions to a place that sells supplies? Uh, something like rations and stuff. Yeah. You can probably find just about anything you want in the bazaar. Where directions to it? Go that way, that way, that way? Yeah, that way, that way. Right outside, if you go towards the, uh, uh, if you go towards the lake and hang a left. Okay. Thank you kindly. What kind of armor is there? Uh, we can find out in the bazaar. We'll find out. Yeah, probably people selling all sorts of stuff. I don't generally tend to go there, but... Or were you asking about the innkeepers lost and found? Oh no, just the uh, market. And I would like something other than rags to wear. Go on. Okay, uh, everybody, you want to settle in and get cleaned up and grab some food and meet down here to eat? Yes, yes, it'll be good to finally proper. I haven't had a good meal for days. Ice and water, <laughs> wash out, like everything. Yeah, hot meal will be good. The character will sort of. Right. Do we have the keys, or I don't know. We have keys for the room, ancient hotels. So. Yeah. Uh, How many rooms did we get? Four. Rook got you four. Okay. Just kind of thinking. Who's gonna sleep with who? <laughs> who's gonna risk going to bed with the drow in the room? I feel like the get Yankee and the Drow are each getting their own, and then and then, Rakuk and I are sharing a room, and then got a Fargus, like, uh, Jim Jar, and Bupito all in a room. Sounds good. I oh, mean, unless oh, they want to share with the get Yankee or the Drow, which uh, you know, What's any of them volunteering for that one? Uh, Jim Jar's fine with it. Oh, okay. Well, your call. Jim Jar spent enough time with Xandor. Yeah, yeah. That's fair. And there's like that racist uncle you don't invite to barbecues anymore. <laughs> well, you know, we wouldn't invite him to the barbecues, except the, the barbecues keep on getting attacked by riders, so, you know, someone needs to Maximilian's Earth and grasp them. Yeah. Can I you, did not expect that spell to be as good as it is. Can you guys see the map or no? Yeah. Okay. I see a, a yeah. giant map of a yeah. city that is I didn't know if you could off. since there's no uh, there's no tokens. I didn't know if you could see it. I see your kook on the map. Yeah, I do too now. All right, all right. Well, we get a good night's nice rest. I'll, I'll, I'll probably throw out some extra money to get you know, to get get the really good food, some nice alcohol. Enjoy yeah, they, a first they proper do meal. They have time. some. So the rooms are it's modest. They charge you accordingly. How's the food? 
get, let's get to the important questions. As a character that hates eating, how the food tastes is very important. Um, they have different things that you can prepay. So what he charged you for was their base fare, which is a modest meal, a modest daily meals. But you can upgrade to slightly better quality for five silver a day or really good for eight silver a day. And it's, you know, a mix of edible fungus, some meat, some seafood. Upgrade it. Definitely upgrade it. Yep. I'm we've got this giant pile of silver. I don't want I don't want to keep on carrying uh, I'll spend the money. Additional, yeah, it's only three additional all, silver and and none of us have eaten well in like two weeks. Uh yep, in drought prison we were almost being getting starved and after that uh, you know, uh, whatever mushrooms we could scrounge. I'm spending spending eight silver a day for the whole party, and I'm gonna I'm I'm just gonna go ahead and pay out five days in advance. I don't know how long we're staying here, but uh, it's a uh, eleven gold a day per per rooms and food. Yep. Slowly chewing through this massive pile of silver. It's silver are there. Okay. Your friend had yeah. seven betrayals worth. My goodness. He ran into. Do you guys want to head to the bazaar as a group or split up? Because we need to split. If we're splitting up, we should probably break out some funds and divvy up a bit. I'm happy to go let's, together. Let's see. What do we need? We could use some. We could use some armor for the two of us. This seems like an excellent place to find uh, heavy armor for a few dwarves. Uh, then besides that, we do need uh, some decent supplies. Also, directions to Blingdon Stone might not be a bad idea. We should, uh, if we can find any agents who handle trade routes to the surface, that would probably be wise. And also, if we find anyone selling scrolls or anything of the like, those could certainly come in handy. Anything I'm missing? Uh, yeah, the marbles. Just slabs of marble? Colored bits of glass. Doesn't matter if they're marbles or not, really. Something we can give to, to Gabagool and like... Ah. Yeah. I see, I see. <laughs> I just oh, had right. a terrible idea. This, using these colored blobs of glass to, like, give him a smiley face. <laughs> he can control his, the glass inside of him. I'm just saying, like, it would let people know that he's there. The main concern with Gabagool is an invisible thing walking down city street. Things are going to run you into him. I just had this image of a gelatinous cube with, you know, googly eyes on him. So it doesn't sound like we need to break up, but um, so uh, to the bazaar we go. All right, well, All right. Let's... to the bazaar you go. We're gonna need backpacks, changes of clothes, and a cloak for our new intern. So in the Dark Lake District, which is the section that you're at, where uh, the name of this inn is Golbrorn's Gold Lair. Um, waves of heat slam against you, and acrid smog rises to choke the air out of your lungs. The Dark Lake spreads out beyond a jumble of buildings and streets, reflecting the lights of countless fires burning across the city within hollowed-out columns and stalagmites. Uh, though the streets are crowded, you move easily within the surging throng of buyers, merchants, and slaves. You aren't the only outsiders here, as you spy uh, Svirfneblin, Darrow, Orcs, other races in the crowd, even a few drow. The shouting of people blends in with the sound of distant hammering to create a constant distracting din.
Not ready then. Busy. And uh, nearby is the Blade Bazaar. Where is the dragon on the map? Uh, it's not on the map. Okay, where is the dragon? Um, when he when he was seen, he was over here. He is not there okay. now. Okay. Blade Bazaar it is. So, going through the Blade Bazaar, uh, there are several stalls and shops set up just kind of haphazardly making kind of like an outdoor swap meet type of thing. And uh, a very common item at most of these are swords of different kind, but there are lots of other things available. Are you traveling as there. a group? Are you splitting up? A loose group. All right, a loose yeah. group. Yeah, spreading out, checking out, checking us on the different stalls, but staying within sight of each other and meeting back out every minute or two. One of the stalls asks if there are other bazaars with different names, like for different things. No, no. Uh, so is what is being looked at in particular? Or looked for, rather. Well, I know I'm a new uh, member to this party, but I've been using this old armor for a while. I thought there's some studded leather. It would be much appreciated. Oh, like yes. You start walking through looking for armor? Yeah, sure. Yeah. All okay. right. That's what I want. Uh, you see some stalls selling some leather armor, padded armor, scale mail, breastplate. Um, not every stall seems to have every variety of armor, but you do see pretty much every variety of armor at some point. Okay, okay. So... I'd like to explain at least, if I can afford it. If he wants a breastplate, I'd like to turn our new friend. You can have this one in replacement. Oh, uh, breastplate would be... Is that... Oh, it doesn't give me any disadvantage on stealth, does it? Nope. No. no. It's actually... That'll be the exact yeah, same as studded. Yeah, but, well, uh, we already have already have paid for that one, uh, so that's that. Well. And then, hmm, okay. now the real question: Do we want to spring for full plate? Because we do have about it's one AC point, so we have close to seven thousand. Yeah, but I'd rather put that toward like maybe like magic fields or something. Sure. All right. We should or give Joe go for a user, or I mean something. Else. Yeah, see if you can get some. She gives Joe the opportunity to build a shopping list of magical items that we could potentially purchase slash trade for, because I know we have some that aren't oh, yeah. uh yeah, aren't I mean, high on the list of things where You know, one thing that occurs to me we may want to find is perhaps a few scrolls of banishment. Um, given the number of well, demons we've Tasha's or Xanathar's, one of them has a entry for downtime purchasing to buy or seeking to purchase or sell magic items and if you spend enough time here 
we can go by that. All right. Well, we're pretty bop. paid up for, for, for uh, five days of the end, so. First off, I'd, I'd like Splint. All right, sure. I'll go ahead and mark off. So you, you're looking for Splint. Um, you happen to see a Duragar that is in front of a shop that happens to have some splint armor there of several sizes and varieties. And he's calling out to people, best quality armor here, get your armor here. What kind of armor are you looking for? You, if you're not looking for my armor, I'll kill you. Because I'm not wearing your armor. <laughs> I'd like to take a look at his armor and see if it actually is the best quality. Yeah. <laughs> well... If he's able to kill you wearing his armor, must not be that good. That's true. That's true. What? Well, who's going to kill anybody? What are you talking about? That's what you were just saying. I never said that. <laughs> like a bot. <laughs> ah, to wear car negotiation tactics. All right, all right. What are you looking for? Uh, looking for something heavy. Splint, uh, maybe full plate if your prices are reasonable. But first, I'm going to take a look at the take a look at the goods, see if it's actually uh, worth the price. Oh. Worth the price? You won't find anything better. Yeah, maybe I won't. But that doesn't make it good, now, does it? That's that. That is a that is a matter hey. of. <laughs> come on, come on in, come on in. It's like a you know a counter make set on. Uh, uh, a makeshift counter in the front of a tent and behind the tent are several almost like uh, sizing mannequins each with armor on it okay okay so i'm gonna he's he sizes you up uh hmm, let's see this one yeah this one here looks about your size And he leads right. you to one of them, and it's good quality. I mean, you know, it's standard armor. Okay, okay. Well, you know, obviously I'm not going to let him know. That. So, you know, play, play it down, nit, nitpick a little, but then, you know, get to get to the... So what do you uh, think? So... You like it? Uh, I suppose it'll do. Haven't seen me better in a good long while, but yeah, there's probably something else here. Uh, how much are you asking? Uh, better good to know the price before you go asking around. 240 gold. 240 with the straps like that and those plates. Those plates aren't going to stand up aren't going to stand up getting hit by a gelatinous the acid melt right through there. He need, need, needs more cross-hatching. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll try to talk him down a little if we see if I can make any progress. Uh, give me a charisma check. Oh, this is going to go great. All right. Oh, well, 19. I, I, I guess I just rolled a natural 20 on that. All right. So you're talking with him for a bit, going about the different things, and he quoted you 240 at one point, and the next time it's like, yeah, 300 gold pieces. And he, he he seems to be adjusting the prices like every time he you get him on to the amount of price. But mm. you can talk him down to only a ten percent markup, two twenty. Ah, I see. Very generous. Very generous. All right. And does does he have two suits? The you know one for Obdam, one for um, Rakuk, or uh, just the one? He has two. Splint. All right. All right. Well, then I'll hand him a pile of silver and uh, swap out the armor. He'll count it and he'll uh, start how, bubbling how the the one for you, and gets out a uh, another one. <laughs> how, how how long are we there? Will he counts out four thousand four hundred silver. I guess, you know, at that, at that point, you're probably just going by weight, you know. 
I'll just get, get uh, out the he scales. Is, he's and fairly good at counting it. And halfway as he's counting it, he turns invisible. But keeps talking to you, and you see the coins sliding over as he's still counting on it. <laughs> That's concerning, but, you know, we'll leave, leave that one there. And judging right. by the conversation, he isn't aware that he just turned invisible. What did... Interesting type kind of people these work are. All right, all right. So that should take care of the armor. Now we do just need a few. Uh, once we've concluded this transaction, we do need some some various sundries, perhaps some disguise uh, supplies for Giselle, and then that's I'd like to see about, see about you see what we can get that's magic. Oh no! Before that. Backpacks for people. Yeah, yeah. Various supplies and sundries. Travelers right, packed well. and uh, uh, then clothing. You can find some backpacks. Um, everything starts at a base of 20% higher than base price. Uh, is there anything anybody wishes to sell while they're here? I don't think I have anything that's worth anything, but... Uh, oh, we do have a bunch of random jewels. Yeah, that we got to get rid of those, too. Yeah. By the way, backpack should be two gold each. Uh, definitely needs one. Uh, and bedroll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, isn't there like a pack for just adventurers, like, you know, in general? Yeah, yeah, like an adventurer's pack is a thing. Duh. Yeah, they have uh, burglar's pack, diplomat's pack. Explorer's pack, there's the standard. I can show that the adventuring gear to everybody. That's ten, so that'll be uh, six of us. Or seven. But again, oh, I already have a explorer's pack. Okay, okay. Yeah, six. 20% oh, higher. So. Six, 72, 720 silver. Da -da. And also, I'll be picking up a... Uh, Scholar's pack as well, because I like to be able to write things. And also, oh yes, I'd like to find a map of the area. Uh, I, I, I like how we've got like a vague map, but I, I'd like to get some get some documents, get some charts, you know, get some. If anyone's got any um, maps of the Dark Lake and like hot spots area to avoid or you know, here be Krakens, whatever. We just need their map to make sure that our better map is properly drawn. Mm -hmm. uh, you can find. Uh, how much did you say the adventurers back? It was like uh, 10 gold each with a 20% markup. I already paid for six of them, so we're getting one for everyone in the party, including the. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, throw in a uh, fishing tackle for a few of us and. Uh, um... We already have water skins, right? Yeah. We need to find a set up of a bunch of rations, maybe like a week per person. I mean, that's already that's already in the explorers pack. Ten days of food. Oh, okay, good. Then don't worry about that. Okay. All right. Uh, so we do have this massive pile of random jewels and golden items taken from the tomb, and other places. Uh, yeah, liquidate all that shit. We could probably have afforded plate armor and then have something to go. But I guess we haven't we haven't gotten to try to buy anything. That's gonna be that's gonna soak up. <clears throat> yeah, 
Yeah, depending upon what magic items are available. Like, technically, double check. But yeah, you see a Lusola's cartography supplies with a, on a crudely written in Dwarvish sign. Hmm. Yeah, that seems promising. Go ahead and go in and uh, take a look around. See what kind of what kind There's of maps they have there. Female Durgar there. Uh, she's got a few maps like staked on the wall or tacked on the wall mostly it is parchment and map cases and ink and stuff like that but she does have a small uh, kind of like a, a gridded shelf with scrolls rolled up in there into different sections ah new in town are you what are you looking yes. for yes yes well as it would so happen Maps. Uh, got a bit got a bit turned around earlier, and that was an inconvenience. So it'd be good to have some proper charts of where we're headed around here. Uh, maps. Uh, specifically, specifically Dark Lake uh, surrounding regions, path to the various cities nearby, and anything you have more detailed for picking out hazards. Maps. What do you think, Hergic? We got maps like that, right? She kind of turns to the side when she asks that question. Dark Lake. I have Dark Lake. Yeah, let's see here. She walks over. Uh, oh, right. Third grid. Uh, she goes down the th goes down onto the third row, pulls out a, a map. No, this ain't it. She looks to the side again. That ain't it. Where else would it be? Ah, yes, yes. She goes down another shelf, pulls out a uh, map, unrolls it, and it seems to be kind of uh, somewhat dark lake. It has uh, some of the channels and locks mapped out to different levels with kind of notations. Um, upper elevation, lower elevation type of thing. But there's not much outside of the dark lake itself. It just kind of points to where these different channels are. See, I got this one. Um, looking for any particular cities or what was that? Uh, she looks to the side again. Oh yeah, yeah. I was getting there. Uh, getting, getting where? Oh, no, Hergic was talking to me. Right, okay. Uh, he's my brother. Yeah, I don't brother. know why he's invisible, but yeah. That seems to be a common issue in this. In this town. Uh, yes, well, we were looking for routes to Blingdenstone. Uh, uh, maps of this area... Wouldn't be a bad idea to know which routes which routes do lead to Menzo Baranzan. Uh do you have anything that also marks off like areas of high or lower higher or lower traffic where the trade routes would be going. Or and, any uh gates to the astral plane would be cool. Yes, and also mm -hmm. any that mark magical hotspots, uh gates to gates to other planes, routes to the surface. Astral plane. Hergic, we got anything for the astral plane? No, I didn't think so. Um, right, I can I can provide kind of nods and she looks to the side again. Ah, just what I was thinking. Yes, she goes to another down in the lower right corner and pulls out a, another map that she unrolls. Um, the quality and scale of these are not quite the same. It looks like they've been uh, done by different people. Some of them okay. have dates in the bottom. Some of them, and some of those dates are like 20 years prior, 50 years prior. Interesting. Okay. Well, I'll try to sort through them. Use use what I've what I picked up and and notated around from our travels around here too. 
try to tell the difference between more recent and uh, or more accurate and less accurate ones. Um, any that have like actual like astral gates or anything like that or uh... no. Okay, okay. Well, worth a shot, I suppose. But um, can we get some of like mark out like routes to the surface or uh, like areas of high drow activity that. High drow activity. She kind of Good. sweeps to mo all of the maps. They're all going to have high drow activity. Eh, fair enough. Hoping to avoid it, but probably can't. Might be able to help you there. <laughs> uh, yes. All right. Uh, well, I'm going to go ahead and pick out a selection that seemed like they could get us around. Around here, around to Blingdon Stone. Any with do they do they have any with routes to the surface, or is that not something they cover here? No, nothing to you know. To the surface, there's a there's a uh, oh what what Il, Il, Ilsa I think she might know how to reach the surface. She's a caravan master. Ilsa. Ilsa, oh. yeah. Uh, I don't know where exactly you'll find her, but if you ask around for her, you should be able to track her down. As for the maps... Let's see, they don't have a price for maps. Uh, there was like... Book of Lore or something was a thing that was in one of the kits. It's probably, like, equivalent to a collection of maps. Actually, I don't know. Like, that was in the... It's in the Scholar's Pack, which you can get for, for 40 gold. It contains a Book of Lore quote. Yeah. But that isn't on the regular equipment list. I don't know, uh, like, 20 gold, something like that? or No, maybe more. more than that. Um, so, for a general selection of maps... She kind of looks at them. Uh, hundred gold pieces. Hundred. Yeah, right. That's reasonable. And what they will do is give you advantage on your survival check to navigate to uh, Blingdon Stone. And uh, provide you with uh, advantage on not navigating to Menzo Baranzan. Hey, that's very helpful. All right. Well, I'll go ahead and get those. And then another thing I want is I want to go ahead and find anyone who seems like they might have arcane lore kind of things. I don't know if there's anyone. There's probably something. And also ask around about Ilsa, the uh, caravan master. But I should probably do that after we finished our shopping. Arcane That's lore. Good. What kind of arcane lore? Now I'm looking for a few things. One is I want information on the um, the Phoresis. Yeah, the Phoresis. Since we've heard a few things about that being different than normal now, I want to expand my background there. Also, any information about demons? I don't. I'm suddenly feeling like I don't know nearly enough about. Um, is the so getting that some miasma thing down here. Uh, yeah, that, that's the 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 freezes, like the good okay. spatial the spatial warping that happens down here. Yeah, Rukuku is interested in that too. Yeah, so I want I want just like I didn't something I'm, those aren't things I'm particularly familiar with, so I just want to have some good reference material on those, and also if we can find anything about. The astral plane breaches there too, and any places where we might find those naturally occur. Uh, that would probably be very helpful for Xandor. Oh, I have a question. Why are we curious in the astral plane? Is there something I missed? Because uh, I'm a Gith Yankee and I hate it here. <laughs> he is. Okay. He is from the astral plane. He got abandoned here, and uh, he would he would like to go home. Oh, we're on. Uh, or about like why you're here, or have we figured that out? Uh, so I was part of a, an Ithalid hunting party because Githyanki hate them Ithalids. Gotcha. And they, 
and then uh, they dump my ass. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Slash, I got captured by certain, you know, pointy-eared assholes, and uh, right, right, separated from my party on a during a mission. Okay. I am fully aware that I will never get back to the astral plane, but you know, your character has to try. Yeah. I mean, unless there's a making a random... inquiry. It's like, oh, look, there's an astral gate over there. Oh, sweet. We arrive, just demons everywhere. Like, oh, fuck. Wrong plane, assholes. Uh, always, uh, I think, uh, six. Mark off seven gold for, for, uh, the clothing for Rokuk. Sure. He's going to burn the crap he's wearing before. Uh, most of the clothing down here are in very dark shades of gray, black, um, dark reds. It's a very common motif. Yeah, that's fine. Charcoal gray is great. Uh, I, I don't care about that. I, uh, I just want to get out of my slave clothes and the one that I've been crawling through hell for, just burn them. Well, I had a question. I was hoping to get a costume just so I could possibly disguise myself when I'm in some cities where the drow are less liked. Maybe that would help. Might go with my mask as well. Five gold. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. You can get costumes. Okay. Can I find... Like, is there like a suitable one that would just sort of be like a really well-concealed, trying not to draw attention kind of deal? I don't know what that would be. Um... What's a disguise kit run? Yeah, this guy's kit probably covers it roughly. That's a tool, right? Yeah. It is a tool. Disguise kits run 25 gold pieces. Alright, well, that's... And that lets you use proficiency... To ability checks made to create visual disguises um, for clothing. Clothing is two gold a set for travelers. Nice is yep. fifteen gold. For uh oh. Hold on one moment. Okay. Rukuk is set except for like dealing with magic item stuff. Yes. We also still have a bunch of random treasure we need to fence. Uh, Rukuk wants to keep the sensor. Um, for sure. two, 250 gold pieces. You happen to notice somebody that has a set of clothing on a mannequin, and it's got kind of like a parchment with a high price on it there, which is way more expensive than the clothing looks like it should be worth. Um... What she got there? Ah, you're interested. Most people aren't. Well, not used to seeing clothes that expensive. So, um, why the price? Because she kind of walks around to it. Uh, it's on a, uh, also on a mannequin, yet its left arm is kind of not on, an, on the mannequin's arm or whatever. It's hanging loose so that she can slide her arm into it. And then she concentrates for a moment and it changes style. Yeah. But change his appearance. Yeah. It's like glamoured studded, studded leather, only it's not armor. It's just clothes. Yeah. Interesting. Kind of 
nod and sort of continue perusing. All right. Oh, yes, as far as selling all these random gems and such. All right, does any of it not have a price? I don't have prices for most of these. Um, I'm about to copy over the whole list here. I'm just going to go ahead and throw it in the Discord. That, I believe, is all the treasure that we're okay. interested in dumping. Oh, and also, d d d where are those? If you just want to work out whatever number that is later, that's fine. I'm not. Not bad. Oh, yes. Training pearls worth a thousand as well. Uh, da -da. Pearls, we should hang on to one of them. Uh, because the material component for identify is. All right. You want to. You want, you want the strand of matched pearls? I mean, I'm happy to break the pearls down into. I mean, it's, it's worth a thousand, so I guess presumably there are ten pearls there. Drug? Leave that up to Joe to be like, how much of this can we... Uh... How much can you what? Uh, how much of these pearls can we take before, like, are they 10 there at 100 piece, is the... Um, no, part of that would be the, uh, value right. of oh. the art itself. But you can get, uh, for spell components for identify, you can convert that into three. We might have better luck just swapping it to a jeweler for uh, you know, yeah. some loose pearls. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, you can right. sell it and then buy a pearl. And the pearl for identify is not consumed. Correct. Oh, right. We don't need a pile of them anymore, like you did in the 3.5. 3.5, there's that wacky thing where you, like, make a bunch of ingredients into a brew, and then you dip yeah. a feather, with, with a, dissolves the pearl, and then you dip a feather into it, you pull it out, and it becomes a piece of paper with the, you know, the magic item written. Oh, the, uh, you had detect magic on. The mug was magic. Oh, okay. Well, let's take that off the list of things to sell. Let's see, add that. Da -da. Finding the ring. Onyx Ring. Okay. 
I think it was from the tomb. I don't know. Uh, we'll say... Let's see here. The walking stick, I think, is what Fargus wanted, right? Oh, yes. Yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, knock that out there. So I will take that off. All right, so for the pearls, um, the whole time you are trying to sell these, the Duragar is just cussing at you, swearing at you. Every time you add something to it, you know, there's an insult, there's stuff like that, but... Yeah, yeah. Eh, yeah, screw you too. Uh, and then there is 20%. Hold on, that's not a total. There, that's a total. 2040 for those things. All right. Well, it gets us our cash flow right up back there. So, uh, how about those those books of, of magical lore? Any luck on, on that front? Uh, no, you're not getting any luck on that front. Okay. You get okay. some try again later, maybe in a couple days if somebody else comes around. Okay. And I guess that leaves us with uh, trying to find magic items or talking to Ilsa the Caravaneer. See about routes to the... It is after 8. Do we wish to end tonight? And do yeah. that next time? I should get to bed soon. That sounds like a plan for me. Give you a chance to put together a list of purchasable yeah, magical items. let me... Rakuk does want to visit the local temple and pay his respects to his god. Yes, we should probably also go there, Leva. Do a few prayers for the dead. I think it's Xanathar's guide. That had downtime in it, or? Yeah, buying magic items, okay. So, seeking magic items, it's going to be a downtime thing. Uh, I can make a generic list of things that will be available. If anybody, if you want something specific, let me know, and we can do the, uh, you know, asking around for that as well. Most of the specific stuff I want would be very rare or legendary, so probably not. I 
like I'm be willing to admit there isn't a dwarven thrower that doesn't have a thousand crew guards salivating. Finding magic items generally takes a at least a week and a hundred gold pieces. You can spend more time and more money to increase your chances. Right. I'll smirk off a bit more money and we'll be paid up for one week of uh, of time. And I will go through and create a list of things that can be found as well in addition. And as far as I know, next game is the seventh. I I don't know of anything at the moment getting in the way of that. All right, sounds good. Uh, should go ahead and. All right, and that will be it for tonight. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out. Bye. Bye. All right. Thank you. Oh, yeah.